Farms in California produce up to one half of our nation's fruit, nuts, and vegetables. But right now, for the first time this century, the entire state is in severe to exceptional drought. And this scorched earth has created a scary situation for those who depend on that land for a living. Right now, farmers are adapting to the extreme conditions and making drastic choices. The lack of rain has forced them to find new ways to stay in business, despite acre after acre of unplanted land. We're focusing on a family-owned farm in Riverdale that's been around since the 1920s. For the owners, the shrinking production is only the surface of a deepening crisis. It's the start of another day without rain across California's Central Valley. And for farmers like Dan and Jean Aradaberry, this prolonged three-year drought is having major impacts. In a dry year like this, uh, coupled with uh, 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 stiff regulations, uh, there will be no water allocated. That means that we have fallowed over 1,200 acres that would otherwise be in tomatoes and garlic and onions. So we are not able to run and farm 30 percent. It's really depressing for us to leave ground out. I mean, we're, we're still paying taxes and, and, and payments and everything on ground that's, that's non-productive. It's the whole valley. It's just a breadbasket of basically our whole country uh, here. And to see this much ground being fallow is not something I like to see. What you see here is a field of tomatoes that is in production and has water to, to irrigate it. Uh, and what you see over here is a field that is not in production because of the lack of water supply. And that problem will continue growing if we don't solve the problem. The Arata berries have been allocated 0% surface water from the state. They're relying almost exclusively on ground or well water. So they've invested in a technique which saves them 30 to 50%. All of the almonds out here that we grow are all on, on drip irrigation. They're all double line surface drip. This will put on roughly around an inch of water per 24 hours. So you basically use the drip to maintain the same um, level of moisture throughout the root zone of the trees, which go down between five to eight feet. In this fertile valley, one-third of all jobs are related to farming. But as the land dries up, so too does employment. Gets a little nervous because, because my life is what I do here, and, and uh, I depend on working. If they don't plant, if they don't get the water they need, then it cuts back our work. And the viability of family farming uh, in this area will be at risk. Uh, including the workers and such. Um, our family's been farming since the late 20s, and we've not felt this kind of impact uh, to this degree uh, in all those years we farmed. If we have one more year like we had these past two years, it's gonna be devastating out here, and we'll be leaving out, instead of 30% this year, we'll probably 60 to 65% of our production out next year. When you look at how much of our nation's produce is grown in Central California, you can understand why this is such a serious situation. Here are the numbers. Chris Warren joins me once again. These are staggering numbers. They really are, Jim. When you think about it, when it comes to nuts, the U.S. only brings in 1% of the nuts that we use. So you go to the grocery store, even beyond the produce aisle, right. through the regular aisles with the cans, the bags, turn it around, chances are it's going to say from California. Sacramento, like this does right here, 99% of the nuts. And then there's the grapes, 91%. We also know that has wine industry. another effect, Absolutely. the wine industry as well. My worst fear when it comes to droughts of winemakers that it just extends on and on for years and years. I mean, that's gonna make it our jobs tougher, I think, to grow healthy plants that are in balance. But it's nothing we can't overcome. I mean, that's, as a grower and a farmer, it's a pure optimism we live under. If we didn't, we wouldn't be farmers. And tomatoes, both the fresh and the canned, 90% of tomatoes come from here. And we're talking some of the worst areas in the drought there, the San Joaquin Valley. If we couldn't grow this, we'd have to import it. We, we have to import it. So that's gonna make it more expensive. Less fresh. Because it takes longer to get right. here. That's right. And also, they're coming from foreign countries that don't have necessarily the same safety and growing standards that we have here in the US. So bottom line, it's going to cost more, not gonna be mm. as fresh, and we don't know how safe it's going to be, for sure. We're hoping for rain for California for many reasons. Water and food to basic human needs. The crisis is affecting both. Funny thing is that back east, everybody's drowning. Colorado's got all this snow, and California's burning up. Wait till they start seeing that the peaches and the nectarines, the tomatoes and lettuce and corn that is being produced here in the state of California. When they start paying the high prices, then they're gonna say, what happened? Still to come, we take you beyond the wilting crops and rising food costs to show you how this lack of rain 
is threatening entire communities.